What's up, YouTube? It's DJ Busta B. This is a different video. It's not about any kind of DJ equipment. It's just a little small repair I'm going to try to do on this um, Linksys. This is a 8-port uh, gigabit switch that I've had for about maybe four years or so. But um, what happened was the switch is on and one day didn't have any power lights. So I checked the power supply voltage and we're getting voltage from there, but something isn't going on right inside of here. So I'm going to just show you that real quick. I've got a little multimeter right here on my flukes. Let me just turn it on. And I'll just show you that the transformer is plugged in right down here to one of these little UPS battery supplies. Uh, here's a cable. You see right here, outside should be ground and the tip should be positive. Plug this in. We're actually getting like 17 volts. It's rated at 12 volts, but sometimes with no load, you get like a little bit higher voltage so you put a load on it. But you can see right here, plug it in, no lights. So something's going on inside of here. And once I opened this thing up, first thing I noticed was from working on electronics over the years, you see right here, we got a big cooling fin. First thing obvious is we have a couple capacitors right here, electrolytic capacitors. And let's see if this camera will focus this close. Come on, no you can focus. Uh, it's taking forever, but um, we got some capacitors here that are, oh there it is a little bit. This one is swollen, this one's swollen, this one is too, and this has a light little bit of swelling that's right there. And you can look right here. Let me set this camera down for a better view. Okay, I had to change the camera settings to macro, but you see this capacitor right here. I get this screwdriver. Look, we've got all kind of the electrolytic uh, compounds on the inside. You can see it's already coming out of this capacitor. And you might can see the bulge right here. This is supposed to be real flat, but it's bulged. And the one next one, you can definitely see it. It looks round on the top right here. And it's supposed to be flat, like this capacitor all the way back here is flat. So you can see this one is a 470, 25 volts. Yeah, 470 microfarads, 25 volts. And all the bulge ones are the exact same rating. So it's this one, this one, this one, and this one. They're all bulged. And these other two capacitors, they're all flat like they're supposed to be. So obviously we had these capacitors had to bulge up. A lot of times that happens from when you're next to cooling fins and heat sinks and all kind of electronic circuits and also another thing once I open up this case look at the color that's like a burnt kind of color like from the heat and this half over here is not burnt but over here where the heat sink is you get all kind of discoloration so a lot of times with heat like that it will dry out capacitors especially electrolytic capacitors so that's the first thing you look for if you're not getting power from a power supply or any kind of circuit that's not getting power check your physical just look around on the circuit board. If you see capacitors bulging, they're bad. So what I did was, let me take this camera out of the macro mode. Yes, yeah, so what I did was I took, wrote down the values, which was four capacitors, went to Radio Shack, and here's the same capacitor right here, which is 470 microfarads, 25 volts. And I got this one as a higher rating uh, as far as the temperature, it's 105 degrees Celsius. That means it should be able to take a lot more heat before it starts leaking and losing its capacitance but these capacitors like a dollar maybe a dollar 29 a piece so I just went to radioshack.com had to order them you can see right here so what we're gonna do is um we're gonna desolder these out I got a desoldering soldering iron right here and some solder and my regular soldering iron I don't have a good one just a basic one desolder these four capacitors out pop these new ones in and we're gonna see what happens one more thing before I desolder these things out you always gotta make note of your polarity Electrolytic capacitors have polarity. So you have a negative side. Oh, this camera's not doing a good of a job on focusing. We're getting the light a little bit. There we go. You see the negative side right here with the line pointing down negative. And I put a black hash mark with a sharpie on the circuit board, each side where the negative is. So you have to make sure your polarity is right. If you hook them up backwards, you can. At times, they can explode. I've seen that in some of my electronics classes back in high school. So just desolder your solder back here and make note of the polarity. And when you insert your new capacitor, make sure make note of your polarity also. And you notice one lead of the capacitor is shorter. The shorter one is your negative, longer one is your positive. 
and it's also distinguished here with the color code right here negative with the big gray mark but always check your polarity before you install different components on electronic circuits one more safety tip when dealing with electrolytic capacitors they do have voltage on good capacitors they they can store a charge so be careful you can get shocked from messing with the electrolytic capacitors these are so small that you probably won't get any kind of shock but i've seen big capacitors like the ones that are almost big around is this spool of solder that hold 50 volts and they will zap you if you short out the two leads together you will get a nasty shock so but these are very small the only max they can hold is 20 volts dc that's the max that they can hold actually it is no mistake 25 volts yeah 25 volts is the max this one can hold but it's so small that the it's micro, you know millivolts it's so tiny but always pay attention to polarity and try not to short your leads because you can get shocked i'm trying to see if i get some footage of me desoldering one capacitor you got to heat up your um, you can use solder wick or desoldering irons or whatever but this is the easy quick fix i'm going to try so you heat up your let's see if i get it on here with the camera I'm trying to do this with one hand a little hard you heat it up and release the bubble right here and it should suck the solder out okay we got one out and we got three to go but it's showing you that um this circuit board actually has the negative marked right here on the circuit um you can see this camera's not doing any good with this lighting um uh, positive on one side right here and negative is the shaded see the big old plus so you can't go wrong plugging up your new capacitor okay we got all four capacitors removed and one capacitor actually as i was desoldering just fell apart the legs just fell these actual little legs right here on the pins they just fell apart so i know that capacitor definitely was bad it was just dry rotted in my hand but these other three they're bulged but they may be a leaky capacitor because they aren't they, they don't look that bad but they're physically they are bulged which means it could be leaking or going bad but one thing you can test it is you take your multimeter and put it on um continuity and right now ol means you know open load like infinity nothing's open you know nothing's connected so what you do is see if i can get this all in focus at the same time okay I take the negative side of the capacitor which is clearly marked right here negative you use your negative probe connected on the to negative post and a positive on the positive what that does is it takes the very small voltage from your continuity meter and it should charge the capacitor that means you should see some numbers starting to rise count up on your display right here and I let you know that the capacitor is charging up like a battery so what I could do see if I could do this on camera Hang on, let's see if I can get this. All right, we got the negative one, and I'm going to connect the positive, and the meter should start counting if it's a good capacitor. Now, it could be a good capacitor, but it could be leaking, like it doesn't hold its voltage like it's supposed to. All right, here's the positive. All right, check the meter out. You see it? Yeah, this one's a little funny, but 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.9, So it's pretty much holding, but it's not actually at 3.7, so it could be leaking. See, it's going back down, 3.6, 3.5. So this capacitor could be a leaky capacitor. I'm going to just try one more just for this video. All right, there's negative, positive, 9, 10, yeah, 113, 129. All right, here we go. Should be getting ready to charge up. 49, 54, 56, 60. This one is actually climbing pretty good. Yeah, it's going all the way on up. So this might be a good capacitor. Oops, oops, dropped it. And this one is the smallest one. Like most of them had a bigger bulge than this one, but this one is almost the flattest out of all of them that are rated the same. So this could be a good capacitor. But either way, you have some bad components on the circuit. It's not going to allow everything to work correctly. So next, I'm going to install these new capacitors in and we're going to power this gigabit switch up and see what happens okay I got all four new capacitors in you can see the different color one two three and four and I clipped all my leads you know once you put them in you got to clip your leads and everything now we're going to plug in some power and see what happens okay here's my power supply cable we're plugging it in let's see what happens Oh, we got a power light. Check it out. Yeah, I don't know if you saw. Let me try it one more time. Not sure if the camera picked it up, but there's a power LED, and you can see all eight ports 
will flash with well, LEDs for all eight ports. Bam. Boom. It lights up. Lights up. All right, I'm going to take a, uh, a netbook. Move the flat out of the way. What I'm going to do, since this is auto uplink on this switch right here, yeah, it's auto uplink. I'm going to take an empty port on my 16 port gigabit switch I have, which runs all my bedrooms of the house. I'm going to take a plug right out of here, plug it right on into here, then come out of here into a netbook and see if we can browse the web. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my Wi Fi that's on here. You see, Wi Fi is actually on. We'll just Go in here, hit my function key, and turn Wi-Fi off. While this LAN is off, you see right here it's disconnected, and right here is my hardwire connection, which I'm going to plug in. One, this is basic Cat5 cable right here. I normally use Cat Category 6. You see everything in this house is Category 6. Every bedroom in this house is wired Category 6 gigabit connection. Plus we have, you know, Wi-Fi also. One of these D-Link gaming routers. All right, and one cable right here, you can see two lights equals gigabit, one light equals 10100. So we got a cable that goes from here all the way down, and it's plugged into this eight port gigabit switch. And you can see activity, just a little flash here and there because it's talking back and forth with everything on the network. And we're gonna plug one cable into here. All right, you see it's on there. And the other end, oops, oh. Ah, whoa. I'm gonna break the switch that I just repaired. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna plug this other end right into this netbook. And let's see what happens. All right, we got some activity. You can see this LED right here is the netbook. That's the uplink switch. Uplink um, indicator coming from the main switch, and this is power. And looks like we should have be able to browse the web. See, Wi Fi is still turned off. Let's just click on the web page. And let's see. All right, here's MSN. Let's go to YouTube. Let's see if we can just play a basic video. And you can see right here, we got activity. Everything's talking. So it looks like these capacitors did do the trick of applying getting power back to this main board and allowing us to browse the web. We're just gonna click on one but just clicked on the video and this is the you know the guy that jumped out of the hot the weather balloon from like hundred thousand feet and we got activity. So for a mere maybe seven eight bucks getting some um, capacitors and I just got like two extras just you know they're so cheap. I fixed this Gigabit switch right here. I think the switch was like 80 bucks when I first bought it. So, and this is like the fourth link to switch I've repaired like this. Even on the job, I do all this kind of stuff at the TV station I work at, and we repaired switches there because sometimes we throw them out. But a few others, we just pop some capacitors in or test them out and see what we can do to, you know, cycle it around, make it a backup unit somewhere around the building. But you see, everything's working. So now I just got to put it back in the case, and we're gonna be gigabit downstairs.